Overnight, Israel has struck several Iranian nuclear facility sites and taken out some of their top generals. Iran now currently is launching ballistic missiles against Israel. So apparently, a few of them have gotten through in Tel Aviv. It's hard to say what kind of damage we've seen. Wanted to touch back, look at a simulation of Israeli missile defense against Iranian ballistic missiles. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Nigel. Iran has a range of modern ballistic missiles in their arsenal that have the range to strike Israel, including the Shahab-3 and Khorram Shah. There has also been concerns of Russia providing nuclear weapon systems to Iran. While there is no concrete evidence of this for the sake of this scenario, we have provided Iran with four Iskander missiles with 200 kiloton nuclear warheads. Israel has a layered missile defense system, including the Hawk, Patriot Pac-2, David Sling, and the Arrow 2 and 3 exo-atmospheric interceptor missiles. Many people believe the Iron Dome system also protects against ballistic missiles, but that is incorrect. The Iron Dome protects against shorter range rocket attacks. Honestly, some morons even think the Iron Dome is an actual dome over Israel. There are no concrete figures for how many Arrow 2 and 3 missiles that Israel has, with costs around a few million per interceptor missile compared to roughly 100,000 for each ballistic missile that Iran is firing. Defense is very costly, which is one reason they may not fire a large salvo of interceptors like they are doing in this simulation. In theory, the system tracks the incoming trajectory and does not fire upon missiles that will not hit military or population locations. This simulation is called Command Modern Operations, and while it is an amazing simulation for testing various weapon systems across almost all nations from post-World War II until today, it is not very visually dynamic. Rest assured, most of the incoming missiles are being successfully intercepted, but several have penetrated the defensive grid and struck Israeli air bases. I know this is some compelling stuff. Right up there with Michael Bay films. These last four incoming missiles are the nuclear-tipped Iskander missiles that Russia provided Iran. At 200 kiloton warheads, roughly 10 times the strength of the atomic bombs dropped during World War II, they contain more destructive capability than all the other ballistic missiles combined, and then some. It will be critical that Israel intercepts them. On a side note, we are preparing our house for sale and one of our cats pressed her ass against the wall and crapped. Do you have any idea how annoying that is?
Israeli Hawk medium-range surface-to-air missiles successfully intercepted the four incoming nuclear warheads, preventing what would have been a catastrophe for Israel. Israeli air defenses successfully intercepted just over 80% of the incoming missiles, which numbered 166 in total. A total of 31 missiles penetrated the defenses and destroyed three hangars and the fighter jets they contained, some ammo containers and three runways across two airbases. In total, Israel expended 24 Arrow missiles, 69 Patriot missiles, 22 Hawk missiles, and 160 Stunner missiles to defend against the 166 ballistic missiles that Iran fired. While ballistic missile defense systems have greatly improved over the last two decades, they will always have an Achilles heel. It is far cheaper for an adversary to create additional missiles than it is to create additional interceptors. You may notice that while the interception rates fairly match what it appears the real-world interception rates were during the most recent attacks, the Iranian missiles themselves seem to be more accurate. That is because I did not include electronic warfare in this simulation. A key component of defense includes jamming, GPS spoofing, and other methods to make the missiles strike in relatively harmless areas. We will explore that more in the next video. If Iran did launch nuclear warheads, even if they were intercepted, chances are Israel would have a disproportionate response. So let's take a look in the nuclear war simulator now, what an Israeli nuclear attack on Iran might look like, how many casualties that could be involved, um, the different weapon systems that Israel has on the nuclear armament front. So let's take a look at this. Relatively um, successful, very successful strike, taking out some of their top military leadership. Of course, in these early hours, you never know 100%, but they did strike uh, nuclear facilities. They hit, um, took out some of their top military leaders. It was seen that they had set up drone operations within Iran, which degraded their air defenses, also some ballistic missile sites. Iran has just recently launched some ballistic missiles towards Israel. It seems to be in a number of about 100, which would be similar to the prior October attack. Um, you know, I've tested out simulations, kind of the saturation point for the Israeli layered missile defense systems, because they have several. A lot of people think of the Iron Dome, but the Iron Dome isn't made to intercept longer range ballistic missiles. It's designed for smaller range rockets. But their Arrow 3 and their Arrow 2s are more designed for ballistic missile interceptions. They also have some Patriot batteries and a THAAD now. So they have multiple systems in place. Today, what I really want to look at, though, is what would happen if Israel decides that their conventional strikes aren't enough to take out the hardened underground nuclear facilities of Iran that they want to, and that they decide to cross the nuclear threshold and launch a massive nuclear strike against Iran. What would that look like, and what kind of casualties would we see? So sorry, I had to take some video or redo some, uh, redo the targeting a couple times. So I'm edited that part out, but you see here the targeting locations. So we have a mix of uh, counter value, or should say counter value and counter force. Let's go ahead. We're going to execute all plans. Let's take this off. And we see already we are striking fast. Let's slow this down a little bit. So 
So Israel has never publicly acknowledged that they have a nuclear armament. It's the world's worst kept secret. Um, everybody knows and acknowledges they do. And to the best of our knowledge, they have maintained a nuclear triad. So both sea, air, and land-based weapon systems, including their mobile launchers, airdrop bombs, and sub-launch ballistic missiles. Should just speed things up a little bit for the bombers to come in. They're a little slower. Let's let them return. I think most of these have already been expended. Give them a couple more strikes here. Okay. Pause, let's look at some casualties now. Okay. We see casualties are spread across a few countries. So we have some Azerbaijani casualties, some casualties in Iraq, Pakistan, Turkmen, this country. <laughs> um, sorry, a little stuttering issue sometimes. Iran's the big one, 6.5 million, 8.3% of their population. Um, that's not something you can easily come back from. Looking at long-term fallout dosages, this would be representing serious impairment. And this is with a mostly counter-force strike, mostly targeting military locations. Not necessarily a terror attack trying to target majority population centers, which could very well. Um, you know, it seems like Israel is being successful in their conventional strikes. But perhaps if, you know, Iran starts hitting some of their cities, Israel has been known for disproportionate responses. And you can never rule out uh, up to and including nuclear strikes. You see, there's a lot of land between these two countries. These, these two countries are not going to get into a land battle. Um, you have Jordan, Syria, Iraq. You know, not to mention Saudi Arabia. Look at Iran. I mean, it's mostly mountains. Um, this isn't going to be a land battle. This is going to be an air and, you know, missile battle. And so you can never rule that out. Even if the likelihood is always very low, you can never rule it out. And unfortunately, when people uh, start lobbing bombs and missiles at each other, escalation paths can take off on their own. And so... It's important to touch base and realize this. And of course, you know, Iran possibly even having their own nuclear solution soon. You could see this not being just a one way street. So, I want to touch base with that. It's in recent, very recent topic. And it's important for people to remember that Israel does have a nuclear uh, armament and they have tendency towards a disproportionate retribution. They seem to be extremely successful in what they've been doing since this Hamas attack. Um, since that point, 
they've been extremely successful in eliminating a lot of their enemies and whether or not they were the, not certainly the sole factor but you have the regime change in Syria you have Hezbollah who's been backing off and already said they're not going to partake in this conflict you have Hamas leadership crippled Iranian influence through proxy groups has been broken um, compared to where they were before that Hamas attack. So you can't argue with the success of these Israeli operations. You can certainly argue with the humanitarian fallout, um, but that's not, you know, it's outside the scope of this. Um, very serious matters, though. So see here that when you start talking 8, 9, 10 million people lost in the blink of an eye, it's nothing to, you know, it's nothing to scoff at. So hopefully uh, cooler heads end up prevailing and situation de-escalates. But that's for a topic for other people. Hope you uh, appreciate the video. Please uh, check out my other videos if you're interested in the topic of nuclear simulation. Have a great day. Thanks.